What's up, y'all? I'm Tyrese, and I call game. Welcome to Call Game with Kenny Beecham. This is like the first official episode of this thing, and I got Sacramento Kings guard Tyrese. How you doing today, bro? How does that feel, Sacramento Kings guard? It's official. Man, it feels good, bro. It feels good. It's, uh, it's been a long time coming, so I'm good. What's the schedule like right now? Because I know the Bulls start training camp tomorrow. Is it the same for Sacramento? Yeah, every NBA team starts tomorrow. So we all, all NBA players had to be in their markets by Saturday to, uh, to do COVID tests three days in a row. So Saturday, Sunday, and today. And uh, we start tomorrow. So you end there, man. That's, that's crazy. So you like a Midwest boy, you know, from Wisconsin, went to Iowa State. Uh, so Cali is going to be a little bit different for you. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little bit of a culture shock. Uh, it's a little different, but, but I rock with it. Uh, the fashion and stuff is cool. Um, you know, I just kind of like the vibe out here, so it, it's cool until, until that first earthquake hit. But until then, <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Bro, that's how I feel. With um, I've never been to to Cali yet. I, I'm 24, and I do this media stuff. I still have been to Cali, but when it comes to the fashion stuff, the first time I was in New York, it, I was like mind blown because there's just so much going on. We don't have that here in Chicago. Everybody's just rocking the same J's. It's just, but New York and Cali is this whole different thing when it comes to the fashion. No, nah, yeah, they all wear different stuff too, and it's like I mess with my girl and and mess with all my you know my you know my friends that are girls all the time. Like y'all all dress the same, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> they all uh, she gives me the stink eye right now, but they you know they all wear. Uh, you, you're you're bound to see a, a girl in you know jeans and a crop top and some uh, forces or some vans, but nice. but out here they wear di- they wear different types of jeans with all these holes and patterns and. They they all got some different shoes on that you're not used to seeing, and yep. uh, I li- I like that though. I like just different stuff, so it's cool to see. I see that you a sneakerhead too, man. You were, you were hooping in the concords. I saw that, and then just on the gram, you had um you had the Travis Scotts, the the uh the dunks. I'm like, man, you into it? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a big thing for me. My whole life, that's what it's been. And when I got to high school, my mom, uh, my sneaker taste in price wise it started to go up so my mom wasn't really rocking with that so she told me i had to start making my own money so i i would ref with my dad on the weekends mm. ref like kids tournaments and take that money it was 25 dollars a game it doesn't get taxed so it's basically 25 dollars an hour right. so i'm taking that money i'm going right to ebay right. and uh get kicked so that's just a thing that i've been into for a while now yeah it was similar for me where like i love sneakers when i was younger but my pops, my, my pops kept me fresh, but it was like one pair for the year. Like I, I, the first sneaker memory I got, I had like some question ones. And it's like, yeah, those, those were tough when I was like seven. But then I start making this money on the YouTube and I can't stop, bro. Like I'm getting packages almost daily of me just picking up stuff and I be forgetting all the things I got. It's, it's kind of an addiction to keep it a buck with you. Yeah, no, yeah, no, for real though. It's, it really is like and after a while. Cause I remember a while ago I made like, Oh, these are shoes I need. And I put shoes on there. I'm like, man, when I get some money, I'm gonna get them, but I don't got them all now. So right. like, I don't know what, what I'm supposed to do, but I don't know. I just be finding stuff when I'm bored. Like I'm into like art on shoes, like customs and stuff. Mm. So like I already have ordered so many shoes to my guys that paint my shoes and I'll have a lot of different heat during the season and stuff. Cause it's just mm. kind of what I'm into. We're going to be on it, bro. The NBA kicks account. They, they have recognized the heat, and it's it's a lot of fans out there that the sneakerheads just like us. Yeah, no, no, I'm I'm really excited to get into that world, man. I hope people, because in college, I, I I had some heat in college, but yeah. you know, it ain't like it ain't like they posting uh, pictures of my my shoes. There's not like a there's not like a, a college kicks on court or anything. So not many people got to see it except for the people watching Iowa State basketball. So uh, I'm excited to, for people to see you know the heat I bring on the court. So speaking of the Iowa State basketball. Um, it's a story I ain't even told you yet. So, you know, like the old thing, if somebody is from where you're from, no matter what you support them. Right. Yeah. So I'm 24 years old. So I didn't go to school with Zion Griffin, but he went to the same high school as me. Right. So when he went to Iowa state, y'all, I think y'all were freshmen together. He ain't get that much yeah. PT, but I was like watching games here and there. And that, that's how I found out who you were uh, before you were like on like the NBA radar and then I went getting the games live. And I remember the one day I was just like Googling box scores and you had that 17 assist game. And I'm yeah. like, wow, this man really breaking records out here. 
Yeah, yeah, no, that, that that's funny. So where you go? Hinsdale was I went South? to Hinsdale South. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, me, me and I, we were the first two to commit there, so we became close really quick. Uh, he was my roommate and stuff, so we were with each other all the time. So oh, it's funny that you, it's funny that you say that, but yeah, no. I, it was kind of a fun experience, and I mean, I loved Iowa State. So uh, Zion's at he's at UIC now. UIC so, now, yeah, yeah, he's and right he's there. He's getting so. big PT now too, which is good for him. Yeah, I see. He, he had the highlight play the other night of the dunk down the middle, so I'm excited for him. Me too, me too. And then y'all had a couple of the Chicago kids there too. So like Iowa State, y'all, y'all basketball program has been pretty underrated. When you look at like all the players that have come out of there, I mean, y'all y'all put together NBA players, which is dope. Yeah, for sure. It's it's not like anywhere where people would think that NBA players come out of. But, I mean, Taylor and Horton Tucker got drafted the year before, won an NBA champion. I think he's the, the youngest NBA champion ever, I wow. think. And, and then, you know, I'm being a lottery pick and uh, and the guys that have came before us. So it's uh, it's cool how it all works. But, uh, you know, what, what can you say? I guess it's just kind of a, a product of our, our work and the culture of Iowa State. So I was I went back um, and I looked at like, you know, those articles that say like way too early mock draft. And I went back to look at the 2021 and you were not on the radar. Right. They, they did like the whole first round and I didn't see your name. So what was the blossom like from maybe going into your sophomore year with no buzz to eventually being a lottery pick? Yeah, it, it, it was pretty cool, I guess, um, after after my freshman year, um, I seen some stuff like ESPN comes out with that way too early stuff. And I remember my homie sent it to me and I was like 51 to the Lakers. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, okay. Like, but, I'm, but in my head, I'm like, man, this is, I'm reading ahead of me. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like, <laughs> be out of your mind. But uh, so I, when I went and played USA last summer, that kind of just took off for me uh, being with other guys, you know, Kate Cunningham and Jalen mm-hmm. Green, who are probably going to be one and two next year. Uh, you know, just a just a bunch of guys that uh, are going to be, you know, top 10 picks this next year. And playing with those guys, I started with them. I was on the, you know, the all-star team of that of that tournament. And so I kind of felt like, you know, I, I belong here. Like, I can do this. So when I got back to school, uh, I just had a lot of confidence and uh, kind of just took off from there. So I, I think USA had a lot to do with, you know, kind of the blossoming of, of my career. So I remember um... – during this whole draft process, because this is the craziest year for when it comes to drafting. I mean, we just had the draft like a month ago when it should have been six months ago. Uh, and there is an article by my guy, Casey Johnson. He was like the Bulls interview, Tyrese. And then I sent it to you. I was like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so I know that things were all virtual here, right? When it came to the yeah. interviews. And every single year it feels like there comes out like a story of an executive or somebody from a team asking something crazy. Like I remember Phil Jackson asked Larry Market and to eat a raw octopus to see if he would do it. I don't know if it went that extreme, but was it something you ain't got to mention the team names, but what was some of the craziest stuff that were in those interviews? Uh, no, nah, I wouldn't say, uh, none, none that crazy. I, nobody <laughs> ever requested me to eat nothing like that. I say the craziest thing anybody said in these interviews was, you know, like usually when you hear people talk about my game, first thing that comes up is basketball IQ, right? So, like, people just talk about I'm, I'm really smart on the floor, know what's going on, like, uh, high IQ guy. And I had a team show me film, right? And before they could even and, – and I'm watching this film, and, and because I got hurt in February and this process has been so long, I've seen these clips a hundred times. Right, yeah. So I can tell them everything that's going to happen, right? So they, they start the clip, and I'm like, oh, this is – uh, again, Seton Hall, I'm going to split the double, go for a layup, get hit in my head, but I'm, I'm going to miss the layup, right? I can tell everything's going to happen before, before it happens, right? So I break down all these plays, like 10 plays. And then the, the dude is like, yeah, so – and then he, he asked me to write down my favorite play. So I dropped my favorite play. He's like, what's the name of this play? I'm like, I don't, I don't remember. Like, I ain't, I ain't played for Iowa State in a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Like, I know my favorite play is, but I don't know the name of it. He's like, you know, like, we're just really worried, like, we don't, we don't think that uh, – we're just worried that you don't know any of the plays. Like, we're, wow. we're worried about that. And I'm like – I looked at him and I was like, like, you can call my head coach right now. I'll call him <laughs> for you. Like, he'll tell you right now that I, I know the offense probably better than our whole program. Like, that's not a concern. But that was probably one of the craziest things because I had never heard anybody question my IQ before. Right, yeah. Uh, and, and I don't know if he was kind of just doing it to maybe get under my skin and just see how I'd react because I mm-hmm. did have a workout right after that interview – so maybe I didn't know what it was for, 
Uh, but I felt like I handled it well. I didn't show like any emotion or anything. I was kind of just like, like, come on now, like, let's be real. But that was probably the craziest question uh, that I got to the press. Wow, you better than me. I would have been like, look at that assist to turnover ratio, bro. I know the offense. I know the offense. Yeah, I, but I was just trying, you know, just got to stay as civil as possible. Just be like, here, you know, everything's good, man. So what, what's the workout like? Is this like a Zoom call and they just have a camera on you? So teams were granted to come travel and see us, oh, see us okay. work out. Uh, they could see 10 guys. So uh, I had like four or five teams come and see me. Um, but you could do the combine. I think if you did the virtual combine, I think teams were able to, to watch you like through Zoom or something like that. Okay. But uh, I didn't do the combine. So it was just a couple teams came and watched me uh, work out. And Sacramento, man, for the past couple of years, there, there's a tweet for me that was like, whatever NBA team follows me first on Twitter will be my second favorite team. And then the Sacramento Kings end up being that team like two to three years ago. Um, <laughs> so the fact that you're there is just, is, just, is just dope. De'Aaron Fox is one of my guys, too. And then another one of my favorite players in this draft, y'all selected two, and that's uh, Robert Woodard. Like, that guy, was, yeah. that guy is nice. I'm like, y'all had one of the best drafts. Um, y'all already got a nice core. I'm, I'm excited for Kings basketball. Is basically what I'm saying. Yeah, man. Me too. I'm, I'm ready to go. I think uh, we got a, a lot of young guys, and there's just a lot of opportunity here. So uh, I feel like if, if uh, you're not getting what you want or anything, it's kind of on you, man. There's just so much opportunity, and uh, I'm ready to get after it. I think we're gonna benefit for sure off the, you know, the playing games. Mm -hmm. You know, be this. There's more opportunity in the NBA than there's ever been with, you know, the seven to ten. Uh, you know, playing series. So I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, it's going to be a crazy year. Uh, crazy things are going to happen with uh, COVID and, you know, poss the possibilities of games getting shut down mm -hmm. or having to postpone them for a couple of days. But it it's going to be fun. I guess the having no summer league is a little crazy for, you know, us younger guys because we don't get the opportunity to, you know, go in a summer league game and just stink it up and just be like, oh, the game ain't bad. You know what I mean? We just right. kind of got to be ready off the, off the jump. So I'm excited for it. Yeah, that sucks for the media too, bro. Last year, Vegas was ridiculous. Like it was just, it's just fun to be in Vegas and then you get a, a media pass. You can just watch basketball all day if you want to or you just walk down the strip. Just, yeah, it's, it's, this thing is so so weird now. But you, we do have preseason. So I know it's just like four games, but it's a little, it's a little ramp up. Um, you mentioned something that I always wanted to ask NBA players, at least since it's been incorporated for a year, is about the playing game. Because as fans, I love the idea of a playing game because it just means more basketball and more excitement. But I can see like NBA players being like, "Nah, we we cool. We don't want it." Like, let's say the ki the Kings are a seven, right? The Kings are a seven going into it. Y'all probably don't want the play it because you could right. you could drop <laughs> out, you know. So right. I guess it depends on what position you in. Yeah, and and. I'm just like you right now in the sense of I'm a fan. Like, I haven't played right. an NBA game yet or an NBA season to have that answer. But I, I, as a fan, I do like it, right? Like, I think what happened in the bubble to kind of experiment with that, I thought it was awesome. Uh, just brings more competitive basketball, gives it to us earlier as fans. Uh, but ask me that question in a year or two, <laughs> and we'll see, my answer might change. You know, what if we're, right. a, what if we're a seven or an eight, an eight and uh, – like get screwed or something by by a bad matchup. So uh, I don't have the answer right now. But I, as a fan, I do I do like the idea. I feel like this is a quest you probably got a lot since you've been drafted. But is there a, a specific player that you really looking for to match it up against right now? No, I mean I guess you know like any two thousands kid. Uh, my favorite player growing up was Bron. So yep. to share the court with him would be you know uh, you know like kind of surreal in in the sense of. I've looked up to him my whole life, so to kind of be on the court at, with him at the same time would be pretty cool. And then uh, kind of just like a childhood thing, me and Tyler Hero grew up playing AU together. Right. So for us to share an NBA floor, uh, two kids from Wisconsin, that, that doesn't happen very often. Yeah. So uh, I think that would be a cool moment. I was going to ask you about that hero pick because that's the first picture on your Instagram right now if you go all the way back and then they keep coming on the timeline. Um, what other NBA relations do you have right now other than Tyler Hero? Yeah, I mean, that's – I think that's, like, the only one I've played with. Eddie Jones, who's an uh, NBA legend, he's my cousin. Oh, so, really? Okay. Yeah, okay. so those seem right. to be – and then, obviously, you know, the Iowa State guys that are, mm -hmm. uh, you know, already in the league. But other than that, there's not, not too many guys that I have, uh, you know, real relationships with. You said Eddie Jones, the cousin. So it's in the blood, just hooping in the blood. I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> um. 
you were part of the Sacramento Kings. They also brought in Hassan Whiteside. I saw that the one clip of basically y'all landed together. Hassan is like the funniest dude in the world to me. Now I'm gonna we gonna come back. You gonna come back on the show in a year, and I need all the Hassan Whiteside stories, all of them. <laughs> right. Okay. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I did. So he actually was already here when we landed. Oh, just us rookies flew together. Okay. So when we got here, we were introduced to him. Uh, and he's he's kind of you know been on chill mode because we just have talked very you know like very little in the uh, in the lobby. But as camp starts up, I'm sure there's gonna be some funny stuff. When it comes to silent. The thing, the first thing that comes to mind is that, is that video of him running around the locker room, uh, and the heat locker room, and he's like, you know, <laughs> the one, the yeah, one so. I always think about with Hassan is um, he used to do these these drive-ins to the Miami Heat games where he got like his his top down and he just like rapping a song, and then the the lyrics that's on the screen that he typed out they all spelled wrong. Just all of them. <laughs> it's like, yeah, Hassan Whiteside, he's just, he's just having the time of his life in Miami. But uh, Yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to kicking it with him and kind of, you know, having some fun stories about that guy. So we got to talk about 2K and gaming. Because um, I think the way we kind of got introduced to each other is because I pulled up into one of your streams where you and Dom were playing 2K. Uh, how did you meet Dom? Yeah, so it's funny because uh, as I came into, you know, some money through endorsements, Early, uh, I knew one of the first things I wanted was a gaming computer because uh, that's just something that is fun for me. And then right. Dom had came out with that video kind of breaking down, you know, all the cool mods that you can do with 2K. True, true. Uh, and that kind of got me geek because my whole life I've been more into the, the creating aspect and uh, doing stuff like that than actually playing the game. Mm -hmm. Like I have fun playing the game with my friends, but when I'm by myself, I just like to create characters and create teams and stuff like that. So I was like really intrigued by that. So I DM'd him. He didn't, I don't think he even knew who I was. He was just DMing me back and being right. a, a cool dude. And then I think he uh, saw the, eventually saw the, the blue check and then realized that I was uh, in the draft this year. So we, we uh, one night, one day he was playing, when 2K first came out for the PS4, he was playing. I was like, yo, play Pro-Am or play Park with me tonight. And he was like, all right, bet. So then we just kind of got a squad together and we just started playing from there. But that's how, but I had, I had been watching Dom through quarantine, you know, right. through his Twitch streams with, uh, you know, the Dragon Ball Z yep. characters and, yep. and, and his, his Sims and stuff. So uh, it was pretty cool how it all came together. Now, Dom is one of the most creative guys in the community, bro. He's always working on a new idea and it's, it's, it's real dope. So a, a question that I think that all of us NBA YouTubers have is like, how much of a reach do we have as content creators, right? So of course we make videos for the people, um, like our demographic, but I think the end goal for a lot of us is to be in this situation where we're talking to, to NBA players and stuff, right? So are there other NBA YouTubers that you might be, be watching and things like that? Well, yeah, growing up, uh, you know, the biggest guys for me were obviously Chris Move yep. and QJB. Yep. Uh, those are my two main guys. I mean, iPod King Carter, uh, you know, Nike Faller. Uh, those are kind of those, those are, are kind of my main bro. Guys. Those are OGs. Messenger Matt. I still I remember being like 10, mm. 11 years old into that stuff. Uh, that stuff was super tough. Uh, and there's just there's just a lot of good guys right now that are out. I'm trying to think of the uh, the dude right now who we who makes all like the replays. He's kind of like Messenger Matt, but he, he I think it's like Real Life Legend. I think might be his name, but I I watch him on YouTube as well. So I think there's a lot of guys like. Even me and my homies, we quote QJB and Smooth's videos all the time. Like they're on my soundboard on my streams. Right. Uh, I think that I think that uh, it's kind of getting to the world the, the time now where us guys that are coming into the league, at least me, people who watch YouTube, we like grew up watching Smooth and QJB and kind of just their creativeness through incorporating Grand Theft Auto and yeah, and all man. that stuff. Kind of just the OGs of the game. So uh, there's definitely a lot of guys that I tune into. Hey, they definitely put that map out for, for the other dudes, for real, man. Because, I mean, I think we all live in the same life. I, the reason I got into YouTube was because of Chris Smooth, bro. And it wasn't even his 2K videos. It was because of his Call of Duty videos. They was just nice. Yeah. They was just nice. And that was the reason why I bought all the equipment. And, and here we are. Here we are. Yeah, so, right. Obviously, you, you play 2K. We just talked about that. But you're in the game now. Um, have you got scanned? Because I was looking at your character model, and it kind of looks like you, but not really. Bro, I got scanned. 
Um, but I would have to redo it or something because yeah, cause I it, was it, looking at it like, did they use my scan? <laughs> like, uh, like, because they were like, you know, come with the come with your cut, like the cut that you want, mm -hmm. right? So like, you know, I always got a part in my hair, yep. so I got the I got you know a cut right before drove down there because uh, I was in Vegas at the time, so I just drove the three hours. I uh, got got scanned in this you know truck, and I was and then I pulled it up and he had no part. <laughs> He didn't really look at me. It didn't really look like me. He looked like he had been in the sun a little too long. I'm looking at yeah, him like, yeah, yeah. Don't really look like me. So, but but the 2K Studios is is not far from Sac. So, uh, once they're open again, I gotta get there because I because they just did our faces. They didn't do our jumpers or none or our right. layups or none. So I gotta get into that. But I really gotta do my face again because they trip right now. That, yeah, it, do, it doesn't really look like you. Like, I can kind of see it, but it ain't. Yeah, they, they definitely, like, messed up your skin. They just gave you, like, a generic face for real. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But they got you as a 74. <laughs> Going into your rookie season, how do you feel about that 74? I can build on it, man. I set my expectations low and everything so that when it gets a little higher, I feel better. It's like mm -hmm. I thought it would be, like, a low, like a 70, not like a 69. Right. So they gave you 74. I'm like, I'm cool. I thought for sure – Flashy passer and dimer were automatically going to be on there. I don't think either of them are on there. No, so, I think they gave you um they gave you neater threader, and it was yep, one more. Cool. Oh man, it's one more playmaking bads, but it's only two of them. Yeah, you know it, it's okay. It give it some time. You know, I, I feel like I got to earn stuff like that. So I think flashy passer is like the main badge I should have because <laughs> that's what I'm known for. But hey, you know what, bro? Give it some time and it will all come together. Yeah, I don't know how much college ball 2k actually watching honestly they uh yeah probably probably not too much bro i don't, I don't know they worried about microtransactions <laughs> <laughs> talk that talk man yeah man they just worry about the microtransaction and they got your offensive consistency at 50 which is weird um it, it don't make sense because the jump shot was hot the 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 assists and to turnover ratio was high I, I don't know how they could come up with a 50 offensive consistency but right. I'm not breaking – I'm not I, – I haven't broke down my stats enough because it, it's going to make me mad. See, <laughs> even you just telling me that, I'm like, man, they tripping. So, we'll see, bro. Give it some time and it'll all come together. You do have the PS5, though? Yeah, I do. Can you see it right there? Right there on the – on the. it's on the, yep, it's on yep, the chair yep, right yep. there. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I'm in a hotel right now, so I ain't set it up or nothing. I just was trying to get in, in my suitcase. So I, but, uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm on there. I'm active. I ain't got I ain't got with my two K squad yet, so give it some time and I'll be I'll be back streaming. Right, right, right. Um so going from Midwest to Cali, um, is a big jump and transition. Who who's there with you? Or are you just so Yes. No, I mean my girl is with me uh out here. She just graduated, so she'll be here with me and then uh my older brother and my younger brother are gonna live with me as well. So uh we'll be we'll just be four deep just chilling in the crib. My brothers just play games just like me, so Right. It's going to be super chill. Y'all yeah, sound kind of like um, my cousin Pete when you were talking about the creation thing. I mean, when we were younger, uh, we only had one Xbox and two controllers, and we would create ourselves and throw us on the, the whatever the worst team was, and he would spend an hour. He needed the right accessories. He needed to make sure that the hair was right. He needed the right tattoos. This is like, I understand why people do it, but I was just like, let me get the game, and I'm just trying to go. Right. No, I, but I've been like that in everything, like – I'm a big WWE head, so, like, I play all the WWE games. And, you know, like, the creation suite in WWE games is ridiculous. Right. Like, the amount of things you can add. So, I used to just be on there all day. I used to make myself go on YouTube and Google, like, how to make so-and-so, make mm -hmm. him. And I do it on 2K2. You know what's funny, bro, is, like, back in the day, like, 2K12, I used to record videos on my phone. Like, I used to go on Player DNA and download, like, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or something. Right. And I'd record it on my phone and scroll through and show people how to make them. And I, I was like 11 years old. I'm in the uh, background like, this is how you make Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Like, he went to UCLA, <laughs> he's right-handed. And like, bro, I swear to God, I'm not playing. At one point, the videos had like five-figure views. But I used to do some clown stuff on there too. So I had to delete it all oh, when I was like, man. when I got to middle school, because my brothers used to make fun of me. But I wish I still had access to those videos. That's, bro, that's crazy. Because I stopped making YouTube videos when I was younger because people started making fun of me. And then I hit high school. I was like, I don't give a damn. Like, like y'all can say what y'all want. But that, 
I'm telling you, bro, we all live in the same thing when it comes to the YouTube stuff, bro, for real. Yeah, I feel I feel that, man. Everybody just want to – everybody want to be a, a – you know, just make good content and have, like – I think having a community around you is awesome. Like, I love being in Dom's streams and meeting the people that be coming – pulling up to his streams. And yeah. when I, now when I pull up and I say some BS in the chat, like, uh, people always acknowledge and say what up. So, it's cool to kind of have, you know, your own community. And I know you – have a crazy following as well. So yeah. I know, uh, I know it's like, it's an awesome feeling to have. And we're seeing more athletes do that too. I, I can't like, the way I found yours was through Dom, but like when you go to the recommended section on Twitch, I've been seeing like Von Miller, you know, just randomly playing Fortnite. It's just, it's just, sometimes I feel like the, the general public forget that the athletes are also people and they just like gaming. They just like the same stuff that we do, which is, which is really cool. Yeah, I know you hear that toxic comment all the time, which is like, shouldn't you be in the gym? Yeah. Like, yep. I, like wait, I got a life. Like, I can <laughs> do other stuff. Like, I can't be in the gym 24 hours. That ain't going to help me. Right. Like, uh, it's it's cool, though, because you can meet so many cool people off of it and kind of just interact with, uh, you know, your community or your fans as much as possible because through social media, it's kind of hard. Like, you're not trying – you can't reply to every comment, reply to every DM. Like, it don't work like that, but – through like Twitch, you can all, you know, your chat's on there and you can mm -hmm. talk to those guys or, uh, you know, sometimes on Twitter, you can mess with people. So it, it's cool to kind of have a way to kind of be accessible because obviously athletes and celebrities are uh, more accessible than they've ever been in this day and age. Since you've been to Sacramento, have you found like little, little eating spots or just places to hang? Yeah, yeah. There was like a like a small business Saturday thing out here oh, where man. a bunch of like small businesses – gather around the i mean the hotel is right next to the arena so uh i met some cool people there uh some like small town places that they sell like t-shirts and stuff so i went out and there was like a vintage i'm big in the vintage clothes so there was like a vintage clothes little little stand and bought some stuff there it's kind of cool because it seems like a a closer-knit community you know what i'm saying it's not like uh like sacramento's not large by any means i think mm -hmm. it's only like eighty thousand people so it, it was pretty cool and then uh, me and my girl found a, a little pl a little cafe called Steamers that we've been we've been active in, man. Their French okay. toast is elite, so we just finding some gems right now. So how so? You mentioned that Sacramento is like the perfect place for you. And when you were sitting that draft night, um, and you were watching and seeing the names and names, was there's like a lot of anxiety going into it? No, not really, man. I think I think some people were wondering that, and I think some people thought I was frustrated that I was at that I was still available at 12 but to be honest with you like I truly don't think there's a better fit for me because I think that me and De'Aaron uh, I, I go really hand in hand with him because I think the knock on me right now is like uh, I'm not like I'm not like a super fast dude but here mm -hmm. I'm coming into playing with probably the fastest player in the NBA Facts, you know yeah. what I'm saying and like I'm probably at this point in my career better off guarding shooters like chasing shooters off pin downs and stuff like more than guard quicker guards off the bounce. And that's probably where I'm better at right now. And not, I, there's no better guy to be alongside than De'Aaron. Uh, so it's kind of the perfect fit for me. Um, and, and I'm excited about it. I think there were, you know, some other teams that, you know, were good fits, but I, I truly feel like Sacramento on top of being with De'Aaron, there's just a lot of opportunity here. And uh, as a competitor, I think that's all you can ask for. And if you don't take advantage of that, that's your fault. So right. um, that, I, I don't think there was too much anxiety. Sacramento basically told me a couple of days before that they were, you know, they wanted me. They were talking about trading up for me, but uh, fell right in their lap. So it worked perfectly. Man, yeah. Imagine if they did trade up and you would have still been able to be there at 12. It's like, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. But yeah, there's a, there's a lot of pieces over there in Sacramento that's just fun at the end of the day, with the year and being so fast. Um, I'm wishing nothing but great health for Bagley. You know, he'd been in and out of the lineup through the first couple of years of his career. Uh, Buddy got that that torch on him. I'm just, just, like I said earlier, I'm excited for Kings basketball because it's, it's so much y'all got going on over there. Yeah, for sure. You you sound like you're cooking up for a rebuild right now. <laughs> Facts. Um, Facts. Facts. Well, I've, been, I've been thinking about this. This is something that uh, my manager pitched and I was like, I don't even know if an NBA player would want to do that. We're like, we come in and rebuild a team that the person is on. But then you got to go to the locker room and just be like, De'Aaron, <laughs> we traded you in the video. So it's like, right. the, the idea is cool, but I don't think they do it. Yeah, yeah I'd be, because I'm going to be sick 
if you do it one of my teammates and they trade me, I would be sick when I see him next day. Like, for real? That's what we on? Uh, yeah, no, nah, that would be that would be funny, but I feel like you would cause you would cause some, some drama in the locker room. Some unwanted drama, man. Some unwanted drama. <laughs> um I think that's that's pretty much all I got for you, bro. I appreciate you taking the time because I know I know things are super busy. Um and this like I mentioned earlier, this is like the first official time I've been able to get somebody on the show without like the big uh, bleach report, a house of highlights. So I really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, for sure, bro. I appreciate you having having me, and uh, we got to get that. We're gonna start up that two uh, K in my league here soon. Nice. I think we get if we get if we get enough people and let have somebody be like a like a, a commissioner who stays on top of people. Like, yo, you ain't playing. We skipping your game. Like, we don't care. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it can be real fun. So that's how we gotta get. We gotta get. We gotta get shaking. Bro, that's one of the main reasons I bought the PlayStation. Because all of my homies play Xbox. So I got I got the new Xbox and PlayStation, but I got it specifically to be in one of those leagues because I, I'm ready for the competition. I'm ready for it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's going to be super fun.